behalf of Indian Bible Translators, we welcome you for the audio presentation of the message, Be a Dreamer, delivered by Prof. S. Paneer Selvam, founder of Indian Bible Translators. We do hope and pray that the message will be a great blessing to you and make you a dreamer for God's kingdom. Please turn with me to the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. In the last days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all the flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall see dreams, your young men shall see visions. Shall we close our eyes for a moment of prayer? O Lord, as we listen to the prophetic words of the prophet Joel, in the last days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all the flesh, and young men shall see visions. O Lord, as we listen to this message on visions, we pray that you would speak to our hearts. Open the windows and ventilators of our heart, so that your word will have easy access into our hearts and our minds, our body and soul and spirit. O Lord, we pray that you will stir up our spirit so that we will listen to your voice and obey your voice. Be with us. Speak to us as the little Samuel prayed. O Lord, speak to me for thy servant heareth. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Now, I would like to share with you this message. In the last days, the young men shall see visions. The topic that I have chosen is, Be a dreamer. God loves a dreamer. God loves those who have a passion for the impossible. If you turn the pages of history of the world and history of the church, you will find it has been shaped by men and women who have vision and mission. Paul says, I run towards the mark of the high calling of God. And Jesus once said, when he was just 12 years of age, he told his parents, don't you know that I should be after my father's business? In another place, Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. As you listen to my message, dear brother, dear sister, I'd like to gently remind you that God has a purpose in your life. God has a purpose in your life. And in this world, the greatest tragedy, the greatest curse in this world is wasted human lives. Dear Christian friend, you must have a goal to be achieved. You must have an ambition to be accomplished. Paul says to Jesus, O oh Lord, what do you want me to do? When he was going to the Damascus, as he was met by the transforming power of the Lord Jesus Christ, he fell to the ground. He lost his eyesight. And then he cried to the Lord Jesus, O oh Lord, what do you want me to do? Even this time, as you listen to this message, may the Lord speak to you to surrender your life and ask like Paul, O oh Lord, what do you want me to do? And the twinkling of an eye, Paul handed over all the keys of his life into the nail-pierced hands of Jesus and asked him, hereafter, not I, but you live in my life. And that's what God wants you to do. Yes, I want you to discover God's purpose in you. Probably your life is shattered. Your life is full of rubbles and debris. Your life, the aircraft, has gone crashing to the ground. But you must discover the black box. Your life may be like a darkened room. But now you take the light of the word of God, the lamp unto your feet. And search the darkened room of your life to discover the purpose for which you were born in this world. And God wants you to discover that purpose. God wants to do something 
in and through you. Don't waste your life. God wants to accomplish something great in your life. It does not matter whether you are talented. But God is not looking for your ability. But God is looking for your availability. God is looking for your willingness to surrender your life to God. Yes, God has a purpose. And God wants you to discover that purpose. He wants to do something in this world. What are you doing for God? What am I doing? What are you doing in this little planet called this earth? Why are you around this world? It is not just taking bed coffee in the morning, breakfast and lunch and then evening tea and supper and then come back next day. Is it for this that you are living in this world? I had the privilege of meeting Dr. Radha Krishna when I was a college student in Madras. I asked him, probably the greatest philosopher India has ever produced. I asked him a simple question. Dr. Radha Krishna, you have occupied the highest position in one of the greatest democratic countries of the whole world. Do you feel that the purpose for which you were born in this world has been accomplished? Or you still you feel some more purpose yet to be fulfilled in your life? And then at that time, I was just 23 years and uh, he was just retired from the presidentship and uh, he just put his hand on my back and said, young man, I don't know why I was born in this world. Listen, these are not the words spoken by a man going in the street. These words, I don't know why I was born in this world, comes from the greatest philosopher India has produced. Listen to me, God has a purpose and you must accomplish it. God wants to do something in and through you. Don't just waste your life. Your father had two sons and the elder son was Johnny and his younger son was Sam. And so the father called his elder son, Johnny, what are you doing? Then the father expected some good reply from his son doing something useful, constructive, but out came the reply from his son, Johnny. Doing nothing, daddy. Doing nothing. The father's heart sank. Oh, I got a son who's not doing any useful work. Doing nothing. Probably, as you listen to my message, God is asking you, calling you by your name and asking you the same question. My son, my daughter, what are you doing? in this little earth called planet. What are you doing? And probably you are telling, doing nothing daddy, nothing God. So the father called the second son, Sam. He expected to get a good reply, at least from the second son. So he called Sam, what are you doing? And then out came the reply. I am helping Johnny daddy. See this elder fellow is doing nothing. But the younger fellow says, I am helping Johnny Daddy, you may just laugh, but I want you to stir up your heart and think, what are you doing for God? If you want to leave your footprints in sands of time, then you have to have a vision. You may live without wealth and health. You may live without fame, without house, anything, but don't live in this world without your vision and mission. God is happy with people who have your vision. Our country must be guided by people who have your vision. Where there is no vision, the Bible says, people perish. People not only die, but perish. The word perish is a stronger word. They not only die, but perish. And now, God wants to do something in and through you. God is happy with people who have a vision and mission. What is after all a vision? A vision is something others cannot see it, but you will see it. The greatest sculptor the world has ever produced is Michael Angelo. His uh, sculptor, that is David's statue, 
even after 500 years it is being renovated and so he's such a man and one day Michael Angelo was walking in some way along with his friend and yonder he saw a little mountain a rocky mountain and so Michael Angelo asked his friend my friend what do you see over there and his friend rubbed his eyes and then looked but he said I see only a rock only a mountain but then Michael Angelo he said you are seeing only a rock but I am seeing a beautiful David statue over there and he went and he called out a beautiful David statue there that is the difference you must see what others cannot see Columbus you take Columbus 500 years back he was standing at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean and as he was standing at the Atlantic Ocean his heart was moving fast his thinking was moving fast and he had a coin that Spain coin it is written name pin you know what it means no more beyond no more beyond nothing beyond that is what was written on the Spain coin everybody thought beyond Atlantic there is nothing literally nothing but this Columbus he is a man of vision and mission and something inside his heart prompted him told him something is beyond this ocean and he called some people he got a ship this is not the time to tell all his heroic stories and he took a ship nobody was willing to come with him he got some hundred people who were about to be killed because of the murder and he got some people lifetime and those people were willing to come with him because nobody else will come suppose somebody comes and asks you come with me in the ship you will ask where are you going I don't know then you will say he has become insane and so he went and he discovered America and that is the vision I want to ask you one simple question now this year is 2004 after 50 years 2054 after 100 years it will be 2104 AD Anna Domina now will some people talk about you in 2054 in 2104 will somebody remember your name do you think then if you want the world to remember you then you have to have your vision and mission God has a purpose in you you may have nothing in this world but you should not live without your vision and purpose that's why Paul says brethren see your calling God has a purpose in each and every one of us the Sun the moon the stars everything the birds and fishes everything God has a purpose similarly God has a purpose in you don't waste your life wasted human life is the greatest curse greatest tragedy in this world you discover the purpose for which you were born in this world ask God God will reveal it to you Dr. Radha Krishnan may not know it but I know it I know whom I have believed that's what Paul says I know where I am going and so listen with me discover the purpose for which you were born in this world I want you to read with me Genesis 15 chapter first verse the first man whom we are going to talk about Abraham Abraham the Bible says God appeared to Abraham in a vision yes even now right now God is appearing to you in a vision and in Genesis 13 chapter 14th verse we read from the Bible after Lot separated from Abraham God asked Abraham lift up your eyes and look yonder look towards the east and the west north and the south yeah every place that you set your foot I will give it to you and your descendants so Lot was separated dear friend if you want to receive God's vision 
the first thing that you must do is the lot must be separated from you there are some people who are clinging on to you Christian life is detachment and attachment you have to leave something and cling to cling on to something else after lot was separated from Abraham then God appeared to Abraham and gave your wider vision lift up your eyes and look yonder yes if you want to receive God's vision the first thing that you must do is go out go out to the streets highways and byways look at the suffering people the suffering humanity that's what mother Teresa did and there was another man Bob Pierce the man who founded the world vision they were walking along the street and yonder he found a lonely woman with a little child forsaken by everyone and she was crying she was about to die and then he took pity upon her and then took the tumor and held and then God gave a vision to him this is the humanity and I want you to found a mission called world vision he founded world vision by looking at the pathetic sight of a woman forsaken by everybody mother Teresa she saw the suffering humanity and she did a yeoman service the whole world is pricing her when a Nobel Prize was conferred upon her somebody asked mother Teresa who inspired you to do this great work then uh, the newsman the journalist expected she will tell some statesman uh, some other great leader world leader but she said Jesus Christ Jesus Christ then the journalist press man asked another question which word of Jesus Christ inspired you to do this great service for humanity and then she quoted Matthew 5 16 let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the father who is in heaven yes she received the great vision by seeing the sufferings of the people even today if you want to receive God's vision the best thing is for you to go out look around you need not go to foreign country just look around your own colony look around your own village look around your own place see the sufferings of the people and God will speak to you God will give you a vision and mission I want to share with you about Ida Skadda yes if you want to receive God's vision you must see the sufferings of the people sufferings and those sufferings which you see with your own eyes must affect your body must affect your heart it must affect everything and Ida Skadda almost 100 years back in 1900 she was just 16 years old young girl she is from England she came to Velu Tamil Nadu her father was a medical doctor doing a missionary work her mother was very sick so she came all the way from England to see an ailing mother so she was sitting in the house one day all of a sudden three Muslim men entered into the house and they pleaded with this young girl 16 years old young girl you know what they were asking for look our three wives they are struggling for delivery the child is due now so please come and take charge of the delivery but she said I am just high school student I cannot look after the delivery of your mother only doctors can do that my daddy is a doctor he's a medical doctor please take him to your house he will save all the three women but they said no why we will never never allow male doctors to look after the delivery of our wives we would rather allow our wives to die than to allow a male doctor to look after the delivery then they went away then this little girl 16 years old young girl she ran after them and went to their house and then pleaded begged them as it were please these three lives they are going to lose along with them three more lives the little children 
six lives at stake. Please, ask my daddy to look after the delivery. But they said, no, no way, no way. As this little girl was seeing these three women struggling with pangs and pain, with pain, she saw them struggling, struggling, and slowly they died. Three plus three, six lives died. That sight affected this young girl, 16 year old young girl. And then at that moment, this little girl, she resolved, she decided, she determined because of the non-availability of female doctors, these six lives we have lost. And then this little girl, she determined in her heart, I will go back to England, I will study medicine and come back as a medical female doctor the same place and set up a hospital. She went, she studied five years and then she begged people to give money and then somehow she raised some money. Then she came back to Velo and set up a two bed hospital in her father's house. And that two bed hospital today after 100 years has become 4,000 bedded Christian Medical College Hospital, CMC Hospital, a premier institution. Even the president of India, they come there. And all this because, please remember, a 16 year old young girl, she decided, I will do this. That is the vision. That is the mission. Today, God is speaking to you. Do something for the suffering humanity. What you see must affect you. If you want to receive God's vision, you go out. God tells Abraham, Abraham, go out, walk. Every place that your foot sets in, I will give that land to you and your descendants. That's what God is giving promise. So as you listen to me, you go out and see the needs of people. And then God will give you your vision and mission. And the second point that I want to develop in this vision is found in Genesis 28 chapter 11th and 12th. In this portion, we read, Jacob, he was going from his father's place to his father-in-law's place. And in between, he entered to a wilderness as a lonely place and uh, full of danger. And the sun was set and he had to sleep in that place. And as he was sleeping with a stone pillow, he had a dream. Even though Jacob is a cheater, he's a liar, he's a schemer, he's not a good man, but God has a purpose in him. Similarly, you may not be a good man, you and I may not be good persons, but God wants to use us many times God uses us, not because of us, but in spite of us. And Jacob, even though he was a cheater, he has just cheated his brother and is coming on the way. But God gave him vision and that is wonderful. Even though Jacob had his own weakness, but God has selected him. God has chosen him. And similarly, as you listen to this message, I want to tell you, that God has chosen you like Jacob. This Jacob, he had a stone pillow and he had a dream. I wonder if we are there in that place, such a lonely place, dangerous place. First of all, with a stone pillow, we will not get sleep, number one. Number two, even if you get sleep, you will not get dream. I can assure you. But even if you dream, you know what kind of dreams you will have? some tiger chasing you, some elephant chasing you, and you are running, you are running. And that's the kind of dream we will have. But this man, this checker, this cheater, this deceiver, schemer, had a beautiful dream, heavenly dream. There was a ladder, the bottom of which was at the bottom of the earth, and the top was in heaven, and the angels ascending and descending. Even as you listen to this message, 
I want to tell you that God wants to give you a dream. If you want to have a vision, first of all I said, you look at something, the needs of people. One missionary said, God did not call me, but need is my calling. The need is my calling. You see all the discoverers of the whole world, the penicillin and everything. You will find need is the child for discovery. The need is my calling. That's what one missionary said. Look at the needs and then God will give you your vision. Number two, you see something, God tells you to do something. Now, if you forget it, God will not speak to you. You have to think about it. You have to talk about it. You have to share with others and it must affect you. When Nehemiah heard that walls of Jerusalem were broken down, were burnt, the Bible says when you heard it, he sat down, he wept for a few days and he fasted and prayed. It should affect you and he was thinking, thinking and similarly, if you want to have your God's vision, you see something and then you think about it in your subconscious. It must be there. How do you get dreams? What you see goes to your heart, the bottom of your heart and then it resides there and then it comes as a dream. So you dream Archimedes, Archimedes. He was always thinking about Archimedes principle. Then he was taking bath in the bathroom and then even in the bathroom he was thinking about it. And then suddenly he discovered and he ran away from the bathroom. Eureka, Eureka. You must think, meditate day or night. And so if you want to receive God's vision, it's not enough if you just see something. But you have to think about it, talk about it, dream about it. It must come in your dream. Your vision must come in your dream. That's what Jacob did. And today God has given you some burden in your heart. And take that burden and meditate upon it. And then God will give you that vision. Not only that, Jacob was a hard working young man. He went to his father-in-law's house. He worked hard, very hard, day and night. That's what the Bible says. If you want your vision to be accomplished, you have to work hard. God doesn't call lazy people. Lazy people God will never call. You have to work hard. On the day, birthday of Abraham Lincoln, there was a cartoon in the newspaper in New York. And the cartoon says there was a mountain. At the top of the mountain, there was the White House. At the bottom of the mountain, there was a log house, wooden house. You know, Abraham Lincoln's father was a woodcutter. And from this wooden house at the bottom, there was a ladder connecting the wooden house to the top of the White House. And it was going in a zigzag manner. It's dangerous. And if you want to reach the White House from the wooden house, you have to climb that ladder. The ladder is dangerous. And the cartoonist wisely, at the bottom, he has given a caption. This ladder, even today, it is still kept open for anybody. Anybody can climb from the wooden house to the top White House. If you have the will and guts and hard work. And so the vision needs hard work. Perseverance. Don't lose anything. Go out and do. And number three, Joseph. Joseph, the Bible says in Genesis 37 5, he was a dreamer. He dreamed. He dreamed. He was called the dreamer. His brothers called him the dreamer comes. But before his vision, Joseph, vision can be realized. We all know how he suffered. His own brothers hated him and put him into a pit, about to kill him. Yes, if you want your vision to be accomplished, you must be ready to be put into the pit, hated by brothers, your own brothers. And then Joseph was put into the jail. He was misunderstood. Potiphar's wife betrayed him. He was put into the jail and there he was forgotten. So. You have to pay price. If you want your vision to be accomplished, you have to pay a heavy price. Graham Staines from Australia. He came to India at the age of 24 in 1964. In 1999 December, he and his two sons were burnt alive. 
Graham Strange never dreamt that one day he will be burnt alive with his two sons for his vision. Yes, if you want your vision to be accomplished, be ready to be burnt alive. There was one, James Caldwell. He was going to Fiji Island as a missionary. As he was going in the ship, the captain of the ship asked him, where are you going? I go to Fiji Island. Oh, there are man eaters. As soon as you go there, they will kill you and eat you. Are you ready for that? Don't go there. But this James Caldwell, coolly, calmly, you know what he said? They need not kill me because I'm already dead. I'm already dead. There's no need for me to die anymore. I'm already dead. And that's what happened to Jim Elliot. Jim Elliot and four other young Americans, 24 years, 25 years, 27 years, 28 years, young men, five Americans, went among the Aka Indians. And everyone told them, anyone who went to Aka Indians never, never came back. Never came back. But Jim Elliot wrote in his diary, I may not come back. He that gives what he cannot keep forever in order to gain what he cannot afford to lose is not a fool. He's not a fool. He that can lose his body which he can afford to lose in order to gain the souls which he cannot afford to lose. He that loses what he can in order to gain what he cannot is not a fool. That's what Jim Elliot has written in his diary before he went to the Aka Indians. And there he was killed. All the five people were killed. That's a price you have to pay. No pain, no gain. No thorns, no crowns. No sufferings, no achievements. And you have to pay the price. If you want to receive God's vision, be ready for anything. Somebody said, if you want to touch the sun, you must be ready to be burnt. If you want to touch the sun, be ready for receiving some blisters, some burnings. Without being ready to receive burning, why do you want to touch the sun? Yes, if you want to receive God's vision, you must be ready for anything. And the fourth point that I want to share with you is found in Acts 26, 19. Acts 26, 19. Paul says, O King Agrippa, I have never been disobedient to that heavenly vision. Yes, I have never been disobedient to that heavenly vision. That was a wonderful testimony. From the day one, Paul accepted Jesus Christ. Paul handed over all the keys of his life into the nail-pierced hands of Jesus. There was nowhere, there was no turning back. No turning back. And he was always ready to do anything for God. Obedience. God wants implicit obedience. Obedience without questioning anything. I think it was the great king, maybe Napoleon, I'm not very sure, Napoleon. They were fighting a battle and suddenly Napoleon decided we have to get to the other side of the river and immediately ordered, okay, we will go to the other side of the river. But the river was flowing full, overflowing. How to cross the river with all ammunition? Then he ordered a temporary bridge to be built. And the bridge will be borne by human beings, his soldiers. He ordered and it was icy water. Icy water. But soldiers jumped into the water and held the bridge. And all the army crossed the river. They went to the other side with some soldiers bearing the bridge. Then after everyone crossed, Napoleon commanded, Now you can come out. Now you can come out. There was no reply. There was no reply. All the hundred soldiers who were bearing the bridge, they were dead. Frozen to death. Frozen to death. No one moved because they are dead. Yes, that is the kind of obedience that God demands. Today, don't give excuses. Now when God is asking you to do something, Moses, God asked Moses, Moses, I heard the cries of my children. I want you to go and stand before the King Pharaoh. Get up. But he said, no, 
they are starting trouble. Oh Lord, they will not believe me. They will ask me who, what is your name? I cannot talk. I have a stammering tongue. I cannot do that. All these excuses, plenty of excuses. Dear friend, if you want to leave your footprints in sands of time, you have to sacrifice. You have to work hard. You have to work hard. Don't give excuses. Gideon, don't ask him to go and fight against the Midianites. But he said, oh Lord, I am the lost man in my family. I am very weak. But God said, you mighty man of valor, go with the strength that you have. Don't ask for bonus strength. Go with the strength that you have. The strength that you have is more than enough. Don't ask for bonus strength. Go. You will fight against the Midianites. You will get victory. And today, God is asking you to do something for God. John Jedi, there was a missionary. He went to Solomon Island as a missionary. And after working there 25 years, he left that island. When he left that island, Solomon Island, the people in that island erected a memorial. You know what it said? The stone, it said, they have written. When John Jedi arrived this island, there was no Christian. When he left this island, there was no heathen. There was no non-Christian. And that is the wonderful testimony. Do you have purpose in your life? God wants to do something in and through you. Don't waste your time. Do something for God. Do or die. Do something. Don't be just standing idle. And as you listen to this message, God wants to give you your vision. A mission. When I was traveling in a bus some 25 years back, God spoke to me. I was reading my Tamil Bible. As I was reading Tamil Bible, God spoke to me. You know English very well. Why do you read Tamil Bible? But I said, Oh Lord, Tamil is my mother tongue. Nothing can replace that. And then God posed a question. If you love your mother tongue so much, what about the people who don't have God's word in their own mother tongue? What are you going to do? Do something for those people. Then God impressed upon my heart to start your vision and mission. This Indian Bible translators. Now we are translating Bible in 20 languages. But I want to do something for God. You may have some problem in your family, but God wants you to do His business. When we do God's work, God will do our work. When we meet God's needs, God will meet our needs. When we give it to God, God will give it back to us, pressed and overflowing. And now, I want you to surrender your life to God. If you want to receive God's vision, then you go out into the streets, into the highways and byways. And look the needs of the people, needs of suffering humanity. And God will speak to you. And God needs you. God needs you, your youth. And now, after seeing that vision, dream about it like Jacob. Think about it. Nehemiah, when he received that vision, shared with others. He talked about it. And then he was dreaming about it. Similarly, what God has given to you, it may be anything. Maybe building a church, or building something for God, working for God doing something for God. It was Oswald J. Smith. He said, go or send. Either you go, if you are not able to physically go, send your money. Your money must go and God will bless it. And today, God wants to give you your vision. And Joseph, he paid a heavy price. Very heavy price. Even today, if you want to receive God's vision, you have to be ready. John the Baptist, he paid his head price as his head. He was beheaded for his vision. And Graham Strange was burnt alive. Jim Elliot was pierced with an arrow. And five young people died. They call it Palm Beach murder. And that happened in 1954. And it shook the whole world. But see the fruits. The man who killed Jim Elliot. He became a missionary and the other people. His sister went and translated Bible in that language. And today, 
you pay the price for the vision and mission and without praying you cannot gain anything and the last thing you have to obey obey obedient is better than sacrifices and now as we listen to this message i want you to pray with me god wants to do something in and through you are you ready for that don't waste your life don't waste your life wasted lives is the greatest tragedy everything god has created for your specific purpose what god wants to do through you god cannot do it even through billy graham through anybody else for that matter god can do that only through you it is you who must come forward you must stand in the hedge and god is asking you who will go for me whom shall i send will you say like isaiah lord here am i send me o lord here am i lord send me and that is the prayer that god wants to hear from you and god has a beautiful plan for you and me will you surrender your life to god and receive god's vision probably after hearing this message when you are traveling in your bus traveling in your scooter traveling in your car god will speak to you in a still small voice god spoke to elijah not through the earthquake not through the fire not through the storm not through the wind but after the wind after the fire after the earthquake there was a still small voice that still small voice is coming to you will you surrender your life god wants to give you a vision live for that vision speak about that vision spend all your money spend all your wealth spend all your youth spend all your energies everything let your life be centered around that vision you may die but your vision will live on nobody in this world has lived long enough to see 100% of his vision being accomplished no one but you will leave that vision to somebody else and god will be glorified shall we close our eyes a loving gracious heavenly father we thank you for this message be a dreamer yes lord you love the people who have a vision who have a passion for the impossible for doing something that is impossible oh lord as we listen to this message as we go back to our place we pray that you will speak to our hearts in a still small voice open our eyes of understanding to see the suffering needs of humanity like mother teresa like columbus like michael angelo like abraham like joseph like jacob let us dream a dream let us be a dreamer oh lord we want to have a heavenly vision a ladder that connects this earth and the heaven oh lord give us your vision help us to obey that vision it is not just like a hobby we want it but we want it for our life the vision should be our breathing should be our food like jesus my meat is to do the will of him that sent me oh lord as we take breakfast let us take the breakfast of our vision as we take the lunch let us take the lunch of vision because our mind should be saturated filled with our vision and mission oh lord you want to do something in and through us through me to this land of india we want to do something for you so that people in this country will remember us even after 50 years even after 100 years in 2054 in 2104 this india will remember our services if that is to be done help us to receive that vision and obey that vision like paul let us say i have never been disobedient to that heavenly vision oh lord help us to obey your heavenly vision through that your name will be glorified let your light so shine before men 
that they may see your good works and glorify the Father who is in heaven. Help us to glorify you in and through us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Our contact address Indian Bible Translators, Civil Aerodrome Road, Coimbatore, 641014. Phone number 0422 257 4143. God bless you.